channel my name is Tapelo Masilo and uh, in today's video we'll be looking at mapping the Akai APC42 Grand MA2 so uh, I'll be using the APC40 in its default mode meaning that some buttons will be bump buttons and some will be like toggle buttons as you can see here and also it has banks or pages right now we're in bank one i'll call them banks for now or midi channels more informally bank one okay uh, let me just switch to bank two and make a few changes like pressing a couple of buttons bank three maybe these buttons so if i go to bank two see the buttons are and then you get the logic so meaning in this section this is the only section that changes as you change banks so meaning that you've got one up to nine multiplied by eight stuff that you can record into these uh, faders which is a lot okay so i'll be in bank one and I already have a few things set up on the screen here. I'm gonna set it up in this um, in this way. This these faders will control the executor faders on, on MA of course. And then uh, I'm gonna skip the, the the track selection buttons and come to where it says clip stop. This will be my uh, button one on executor one because it's a bump button and then here this will be button 2 and button 3 and then here I'm gonna have uh, where it says activator 1 up to 8 I'm gonna have the groups I'm gonna have my groups so I can press here select group 1, group 2, group 3 and so forth but of course now since these buttons are toggles I'll have to select like if it's on it's selected and when it's off you know get the idea Okay, you'll see in the software. Solo queue, I'm going to have my color presets, one up to eight. Okay, I'm just going to limit things to eight for now, just to, you know, cover this space. So I'm going to li limit myself to eight uh, color presets. And down here, where it says record arm, um, I'm going to have positions. So I'm going to record eight positions also. And then uh, in this section here where it says track control, I'm going to have encoder wheels. So I'm going to increase the dimmer, decrease the dimmer. Yeah. Since this section does not change with, with the track selection buttons. So I'll have the MIDI encoders there. Okay, and some things will just program as, as we see fit or as I feel that I'm going to need a certain function, I'm just going to add it to one of the buttons here. All right, so let's head over to the software side. Software side, I'm using ME3D and I downloaded a stage from ME Stages, which is um, a nice website where you can get some stages for practicing and working on your craft. Um, I'm going to use Loop MIDI and MIDI Aux. So you're gonna come here to set up on loop midi you'll add a new midi port and you'll name it so i named this dynamic two loop you head over to advanced you put the maximum size on eight and that's it you can close it it will just minimize to to the system tray and then i'm gonna head over to midi aux so what midi aux does is that it will translate the MIDI data from the APC40 and will send it straight to Loop MIDI and then Loop MIDI will communicate with Grand MA2. Okay so now let's set up MIDI AUX. Okay so now to configure MIDI AUX um, this is what you're gonna do when you open it up you're gonna have your clean window and then you can click here on input and output monitors it will give you these uh, uh, these two screens right here first we, we map the midi input and output ports so let me just delete things here so that i can start again 
I will check what's in there. Okay. So here we have MIDI inputs, here we have MIDI out. I uh, will take input from the archive. My PC output is uh, going out to Grand MA loop, which is that loop MIDI we set up earlier. Then what I have to check is that when I have to drag APC40 into this, and there we go. And then what you'll notice is that when I move the fader, there's some information happening here. So under data one, it says seven, uh, which is note seven, channel one, as I move the first fader. If I move the second fader, note seven, the channel two, note seven, channel four, note seven, channel five, and so on until eight. Okay, so we're gonna map the first fader to the first executor on MA. So how we do that is that uh, this uh, blue information, as you can see, it's highlighted as volume or control change. It must be translated to note on MIDI signals so that grand MA can understand what's going on. So it will, it will, um, take the control change, translate it to note on, and also add some velocity values, which are under data two. But another uh, important thing to note is that MIDI aux reads data in hexadecimal on this output and input screens. However, when you come this side to MIDI mapping, it reads data as decimals. So just be very aware of that. We will say insert uh, channel one because we're moving the first fader. I'm making the first fader from now. Event type is control. And this is the node number, node number seven, which says minimum. Node seven, uh, match input, let's put it on one. Even type it, this is where you're changing the control to a note on signal. So we have note on seven, note number seven. Let me say okay, okay, and I move it. It's not moving. Um, I might have forgotten to click this. Yes, uh, turn on map of the okay, very important. There you go. Now we have the green notes, which is now node on. On Grand MA, you come here and you click on options, MIDI. We set the device to Grand MA to loop. Set up remote MIDI inputs. Come here to say add. And then uh, you type the name, say OK, Note 7, Channel 1, uh, Executor. So here you've got options whether you've got, you want to um, set it up as an executor, a command, or a hard key. So some of the things will be hard key as you'll see as, uh, as we progress with the videos. Some will be command. Uh, but for now, it's executor on current page, executor one. And then here you've got options, bump up button one, two and three, so I'm gonna put it on fader. Hence, now we are having a response. Okay, now to set up all the faders, I'm gonna head back to MIDI aux. Uh, come back to mapping. And then I'm just going to change one thing here. Edit. So, what's constant here is node 7. What's changing is the channel value. Right. Okay. Now, where it says channel, I'm just going to say any. And then set output to match any. It's to match input.
yeah let's end it here for now uh in the next tutorial we'll be looking at mapping the encoder wheels to these wheels here or encoder faders on the apc40 and yeah i hope to see you in the next episode and i hope we learned something today and uh, let it be light peace